on my iPad if I can get that to work. It just fell off, fell over. I think Total's given you a copy of this, um, and yes. and he's got, he's got a few yeah, versions of this one. Everyone got one. This one, this one's got no spelling mistakes in it. But I'm doing a lot more teaching of urban sketching now, and um, so if I just run through this very quickly, and it's it's not I don't really have time to probably explain it in too much detail, but um, the uh, <clears throat> Like w number one is what to sketch and where from, and and the top drawing that drawing on number one is is a scene on a street near where I live. It's got churches and trees, and the question is, <coughs> are you trying to show the overall scene? Are you focusing on historic building? Are you focusing on the neighbouring building? Are you focusing on the view between the building? So each one of those views can be completely different. And I've drawn this scene four or five times and each one's a slightly different view. I've drawn detailed views of the building, I've drawn views of the city past the building. A friend of mine drew this recently and he drew that tree on the left, you can see that tree on the left hand side and it, it, he's drawn the church behind it and completely confuses you. You can't really see the church properly. So is it a drawing of a tree or a church, but it's quite a beautiful drawing. So number two is about perspective. We'll talk a bit about that in a minute. And it's important that you get confidence with perspective you don't already know. And and I just used the word, you got to anchor yourself in the scene. And that relates to having an eye line. So you can see the orange people and the heads form the eye line. And so everything more or less vanishes. That's the simplified version of perspective. Everything vanishes to the horizon line. So every horizontal line on the right-hand side of that box of that building on the left-hand side, it all vanishes to the same point. So if you keep that in mind, and when you look at a scene, you'll, you'll see that it changes if there's different angles, obviously. But it's important that um, you you anchor that and you look at vanishing points. Um, four is about the medium, um, and that's what that's whatever you want to do. That's fine. Um, five is about you know framing up the scene. So I'll always choose part of the scene. Sometimes it's the focal point, but often it's a key vertical line, um, and it might be. In fact, with that one, I drew the um, the boat, the little pole next to the boat. Then I drew the boat in, and then once you get the pole on the boat. And I did a bit more detail on the boat. The rest of the scene builds out from that. And so you have a scaling element and, and the boat is the focal point. So I could have stopped almost at any time. People say, when is the drawing finished? And I say, well, when the pages fill up largely, but equally, if you're starting with the focal point, you can almost finish it at any time because you've got, that could be the finished drawing. You might put a bit of, bit of water in there and that could be enough to say that's the drawing, that little red drawing through there. So it's about observation and looking and filtering and, and observing the key elements the key points, the key verticals. Number six is, is really important to build texture and contrast. Um, what I probably didn't say somewhere is a strong foreground, maybe that's in con contrast. So having the tree in the foreground is quite a nice contrast between the, the foliage, the roundness of the trunk, the, the roughness of the trunk against the water and the boat um, and the tree. The tree was only about a meter and a half from where I'm sitting. So you could draw the leaves quite well and um, you could draw the, uh, you know, the texture on the bark quite nicely. Uh, and also that's just looking at textures on the plan. I, I traced off the sketch on, on the iPad and that's just about textures. So it's really important to build texture in your drawings, um, cross hatching or blacks with, you know, whites in them still. I don't usually draw straight black lines or, or black shapes. I'll have black with flecks of white because I, I think there's always a bit of lightness in the, in the shading. And number seven is about details, you know, and that really enlivens it, like signs and cups and plates and and um, little. Um, I think on that one, that's a nice little coffee cart. There's also a little clapboard sign somewhere as well, and the awning of the doorway and the bracket of the awning. So that's what the architect kind of brings to these things is the is the uh, the observation of the detail. And then the other page is just four examples, so you can see the final version of that drawing on the left which is the um, Breakfast Creek, um, the antique center on the bottom left, uh, on the top right, the, um, the Black Rabbit Cafe. So I do quite a few drawings with different colors and that's a nice way to get different layering as well. Um, you can do a darker color in the foreground then a lighter color in the background that gives a natural depth to the, to the drawings. The bottom right drawing is what I'm gonna show you in a minute is um, using a technique where I'm, I'm actually gonna draw the scene first with a, with a pencil and then I'm going to go over it with an ink drawing with ink line and then do some darker tones for some shading and, and, and shadows. And that's what I've been teaching people is that because I draw all these drawings of ink onto the page, there's no pencil set up. It's just you just jump in and draw ink 
and that it's not forgiving um, and it's pretty scary for the first uh, 10 minutes. But there's usually a point of time we say, I've got this drawing done. Sometimes you don't, sometimes you're always worried about it. Um, I think the drawing on the top right, I, I got pretty easily. The bottom left one actually turned out quite easy. I was in a good mood that day and I was allowed to sit inside the antique center and do that sketch. It's an old cinema actually, so you can see the proscenium arch through there. So, um, so that's, that's my talk total. And I probably went a bit longer than I thought, a bit longer than last night in our rehearsal. But you'll have all this information. There's uh, my email, the title's got that anyway, but Instagram, Design Thinking Drawings, the web, Design Thinking Drawing, and then YouTube's Design Thinking Drawing as well. So um, that's, that's, that's that, so at all. So while I'm setting up my other thing, um, if there's any, so a couple of- have a, uh, show how he draws. So, so it's going to be the techniques, it's very interesting to see uh, uh, how uh, uh, he works with uh, Vanishing points, perspective, with the elements of the of the picture, and uh, uh, so so that is the. Uh, so was that all clear? Total, that was okay. People could follow it along, all right? Yes, that was great. Yeah, excellent. So, what I um. <coughs> What I'm trying to do here is to, yeah. So can you see my hand, anybody? Yes. yes. No. You but can? it's not okay. on the screen. Righto. Okay. I've got it. I'm sharing the screen, so I need to stop sharing, share content. Um, screen. I can see my pens. Can you see this or not? No? Yes. You, you need to share, I think, the camera. Or yeah, I'll share, I'll share the screen. Hmm? You can see my hand, can't you? That's not. Hmm? So. Okay, we, we can say that. Well. Uh, we, we can see that super good yeah, now. Yeah, good. I'm going to, I'm just going to leave, I'm going to leave the meeting on my computer and I'm going to stay on my iPad. So, so you, 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 you can, you, you can, uh, you can see, you can see my screen, what you receive. We see your pencil. It's a really good, it's a good yeah, okay. perspective. Sorry. Sorry, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to re-log back in with, with this, just a second. I did, I did something wrong then. So, um, I want to be able to, Toto, if people have, a, have seen that drawing, that photograph of the center of town that I'm drawing, they've seen that picture, you've sent that to them? No, no I haven't. Uh, that was a mistake. Okay. That's all right. Um, but but I, I can send them later, so it's no problem. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I hold them. Um, what I might try to, uh, what I might do is actually, I might do the, this drawing a bit later. I might just do this one first. Um, just bear with me for a second. So um, now, now your 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 iPad is uh, lost. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Okay. Yeah, it's all right. I'm just trying to. Um, I'm not. I'm not so uh, <laughs> skilled at this. Um, share content. Share screen. Start broadcast. So can you see that? Yeah. Yes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually do it on the iPad to start with. Because it's just useful. Um, and I could draw it 
as well. We might try and do that, some of that right at the end. I might just do a quick sketch of it at the end. But this is a scene that Todor suggested, and it's quite a nice building. It's in that main pedestrian mall area. Um, it's from the Google Earth car, so it's it's a strange, slightly strange, um, strange angle. But the first thing when I talk about anchoring yourself in the scene, and and for those that use use Procreate, if there's any Procreate nerds there, there's I use ink bleed, and I use about nine percent, maybe 10, 12 percent. Um, but the the first thing we need to do is the eye line. And the eye line is usually people's heads, but because it's the Google car, it's higher. And so if you want to anchor yourself in the scene, that's that's kind of the eye line. Now, what's important about that is that you can see that these all these lines here are, are, are basically going down towards the eye line. And if you look at this here, if you just bring it down to there and then that one to there, that's what's called the vanishing point. So this is a one point perspective largely. And so that's that's the vanishing point. So talking about anchoring yourself in the scene, you need to know where this point is, this vanishing point is and where the eye line is. Um, the eye line, as I said, is slightly above people's heads. It could be slightly low there. So when I would draw this, I'd probably start drawing um, up in here, this this corner, this corner device, um, little, little corner building. And, and try to get the proportions sort of right and say, well, you know, that's kind of a, a distinctive feature of the building. And so I'd be just drawing it, I'm not tracing it, but just drawing it and trying to get the proportions to work. It's got a nice bracket under there. Um, if you look at that through there, and then that's the chamfered corner, which seems to be characteristic of a lot of the buildings around there. There's the chamfered corner on the ground, but the, the, the building above hangs out further. I'd probably still then be drawing these little bits here. And I'd probably finish off drawing this whole thing. Now, I probably wouldn't draw the windows in yet too much. We don't need to do that. But that gives you, kind of anchors you in the, in the, in the scene. And then and I'll do this with a blue, a blue line just for the sake of it. If you draw a line through here of that shape of the street, right? And you say, well, that line, those lines aren't really, that's not really part of the drawing, but that's about one as to one. So I'd be then drawing in, I'd be measuring that and drawing that in there and saying, well, that's more or less the same height as, as across here. Um, and it's, it's one as to one. <clears throat> and then in terms, I'll just rub this one out in terms of, you know, in, in a drawing like this, it's, it's, it's really critical to, to um, I'll use that color there, is to get all that perspective working. That's the key part of the drawing. iPad's good because I can just erase it all, it's fine. But what I often do is to say, well, there's a point here. Um, it actually lines up with that point through there and, and that width there and that width there are kind of the same width. Because one of the hard things in a perspective is to get the, this, this always is too long on the side, you'll, you'll, you'll put the building like that and it doesn't look right. So you've got to, so you can, and that thing gives you that point. And so if you've got the vanishing point, you can you can begin to, you know, see how easy it is to, to do all that. So if you're doing this in a pencil, it could be a graphite pencil or a coloring in pencil, you can rub a bit out later on, that's fine. Um, but you can also, it's just also practice. Um, and so you're getting that, that shape in through there and then you've got these two little gables. Um, so you're starting to, to sort of set up, you know, the basic, the basic shapes of, of the drawing. Now I can rub out bits of this because it's um, on the iPad. This wall along, these buildings are characterized by quite a nice strong base um, that's expressed with um, corbeling. And there's like a, a sill line through there. And then the ground level is really quite strong um, and it's got these arched openings, so you can start to draw those arched openings in. But what's interesting is that you've got this sort of, um, there's an arch there on that side, there's an arch on this one. This one's a square one with the gable roof. There's an arch on the ground floor, so and that's this one there. Also, in one single building, each floor has a slightly different architecture, which is 
quite interesting and adds to the richness and they're the things you notice when you draw it, <clears throat> which is quite nice. Um, on this side here, you can see that there's these, these two things here, right? They're actually above this bay and this bay. So we've got these things, we can just draw those in. And these are all the same, the same size, more or less. There's more of, there's a bigger gap through here. And that's not surprising because this, this part of the building to the downpipe <clears throat> also becomes part of the corner of the treatment. So it's just not this, not this, this device on the corner, but it's also the bit that runs around there. Um, and so I think there's some, they're called pilasters that come in there. I, I can't see from the photographs, but I'm assuming there's little columns that sort of stick out and then there's single ones through here. So you've got this quite nice, and then of course the roof. And what I like about this drawing is you've got this, this thing in here, which is quite a nice um, bit of detail. And I put that on purpose, so that's foreground. Um, and so from there, you can start to then draw the rest of this and put the tree in and, and um, put those other buildings in through there. And then of course, there's some buildings in the background. <coughs> so it's really, it's sort of like an analytical process. It's just not drawing stuff. It's actually thinking, picking a part of the drawing, which has got a, a critical sense of proportion and elements. And then you can build out the drawing from it. Like I think that corner, as I said, is, is, the, is the most interesting part of the building. Um, if I just change some of the brush types. Um, I've got that all wrong, sorry about that. I'll just take that off. Doing this too quickly is not a good thing. <laughs> um, so, um, and then on the ground, the ground floor, we can do another, another, um, another layer, which I can, doesn't want to work. There it is there. And of course, I can turn off the um, photograph. So you can start to see how that comes together as a drawing. So that's sort of what I mean by anchoring yourself in the scene, picking the focal point, trying to draw it accurately, um, looking at the proportions, you know, what's the proportion of, of this? I'll do it in blue. Oops, wrong, wrong brush type. <laughs> um, what's the proportion of, um, you gotta make sure it gets put, selected. You know, what's that proportion there? What's this proportion here? That's not quite a square, but it's not two squares. It's probably one and a, 1 1.25 to one, three to four proportion maybe. So I'm constantly looking at those elements about proportions and quite often proportions are like one to two, two to three, you know, three to four. And sometimes they're the golden mean, you know, one to 1.61. 1 so you, you can begin to, you know, you look for proportions in buildings because buildings are designed by people who think thoughtful about what they're doing, obviously. And so, uh, um, they're often, there's often a geometrical order to the building, structural grid that might be a, a rhythm, that these are a, a certain spacing in the building. Um, so all those things are useful and they're all, they're all useful for you to understand in terms of if you're trying to design something, you know, there's a, a structural order and a rhythm to the project. There's a, um, I'll put some of these in and then they've got these devices in here on the top level I noticed that come through there. But this is a nice urban building, you know, it's got a very strong base. It's got a nice middle part and it's got an expressed part on the top. And talking about the skyline, you know, it's, it'll just do it in a, um, uh, for the sake of the, the green, but you can see there's the sort of, these things help the skyline. You know, so there's quite a nice, um, I can actually do it in, um, in this color. You know, I often put the sky in because um, as I said, I like the sky and it's obviously often blue in Australia, but you get that very nice sort of interesting shape in the building, which I think adds to the scene. So Toto, that's the sort of the start of it all. Um, <clears throat> what I'll try and do quickly is to, 
the idea was to have um, the technology is a bit tricky to have all the uh, photographs on the screen and so it was my thing there kind of an exercise and that you look at it my, and then you draw it from the memory to see what you have uh, remember it's a very interesting uh, so I you can't see my screen yet um, on the iPad. I don't know why that is. Just wait a second. Um, now, perfect. That, that's better? No, it was working then, it's not working. Okay, is it working now? No, now you will see your iPad screen. Now, yep. yes. Now it's working. Okay, so so what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll try and draw that same scene from memory, um, <laughs> which will be slightly tricky. And I'll use this blue pencil to start with. So as I said, um, you know, there's that angled um, space, and maybe that's the right kind of shape. I don't actually, because I haven't drawn it yet properly. I it's a little hard to remember it all, but I do know that there's that those brackets at the side, and this comes through. And then there's there's that shape in there, and then I think there's a piece up here, um, and then there's this sort of thing up there for the. And I think these were round; these ones here weren't they? And they were square up there, and I'm, maybe there was a, maybe they're like that. Now I talked about that being the same width through there, and then that lining up with that. So that's kind of the the um so you can start to see that you can recognize the drawing there's two little turrets that come up through there um that's actually probably closer to like that there's another building in here and i think another building in there and then there's one that sort of sits there and then comes back down and then there's a square here isn't there and that's the, the other building and that's the and that's that eye line which i should have drawn in from the start but you can see just by explaining that to you, and then there's the and the street runs down the side, and then there's a and then there's the that little thing up there. And there's a roof that runs through, then there's another one here, and then there's a, a gap missing, and then there's the window. That's the round one that does that. And these are the pilasters in here, and then there's this thing that runs through. So there you go, Todor. I've, I've having drawn it now a few times. I'm sort of getting. I forget how many have the windows there work. Whether there's paired windows or or what, I can check that later. Um, and then there's of course the um, all this sort of coursing that that comes through. And then somewhere around here is this interesting building. Um, it's got that interesting little thing there and a bracket coming through there and there's a lot of people in that position and then there's these things that come through i think that thing up here isn't there there's like another building that sits up higher and these things come through there and then in the distance there's something else so what do we think folks there you go good exercise so what i might then do is you know, once you've done all that, you might then start to go over it. Um, and this is a really nice pen. This is just Bond photocopy paper. I've just gone frozen. Um, Bond photocopy paper. This is what we use in the office. They're called Ugo line pens, art line. So you could draw that in through there. You can start to put some detail on. And the nice thing about doing like this is you don't need to draw, to draw every line and you can just.
so 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 this is an indigo pencil it's quite nice no there's no shadow on here specifically but i'm just going to do do this just so it's there's a bit of darkness in here and a bit of darkness in there this is done to just give a bit of shape and to the uh we can add more detail around the back there if we wanted to you know down the street um so there is also a difference peter when you uh, uh, draw from your mind you're losing the detail but you're getting the type up so, so you try to find relations with uh, other elements who could kind of fit the uh, uh, image yeah now it's it's a it's a powerful exercise i tell you it's and i do it so, myself so, so just to practice like a shift from what you see to what you can imagine and what you can classify later on and how you do comparison and how you work and it's not purely the drawing of, of a building and architecture but the entire city how the elements of what's in the vista and how the vista influences you in, in creating that space and how you design and then the thing that we discuss about different possibilities who gets the chance and who gets in the vista and what elements in the vista are really because all of these things not maybe don't matter to someone else so, so it's just a uh, um, uh, it's it's a it's a very interesting. Uh, so this is the the townscape analysis uh, illustration part of it. But the background of it is really to create this uh, uh, English garden out of the city, right? create a, a kind of a wonderful diversity and, uh, 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 into the city. And and this is the way to communicate. Uh, through drawing and sketching and and uh, and when you kind of create your uh, your uh, opening art, uh, assignments you can kind of always have a bit of exhibition of your drawings maybe not everyone in the group likes maybe one would like to draw but you can also say well let's try to kind of work with that or so, so it's a it's a oh. really uh, and uh first fantastic having you peter to kind of show it it looks a bit impressive it's hard work. It's really hard work, and you know it takes uh, lots of skill and lots of skill. And and then Gordon <laughs> Cullen was the expert. He was the master illustrator, who is like still admired for his. Uh... As I tell people, this drawing took ten minutes and uh, thirty-five years practice. So, <laughs> 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 but I certainly encourage people to um, to have a go, you know, and then. There's a flag there, which is quite nice. Um, we could start to put, I need to get a sharpener out for my pencil. Um, sky is a big part of what I draw, as I said. So I want to put a bit of sky on there. Although it's a very bleak day in, in um, Carl's Corner the day of the Google. The Google. But the sky yeah, today actually- we have a bleak day, I think. No sky. And I'll sign it, PR. So, so I said to Todor last night when we talked, um, I really have a strong commitment to trying to inspire students of design and architecture and urban, urbanism to really embrace drawing and to be confident with it. And if you have some confidence, don't lose that. As you go through the course, you do more, much more with computers and Revit and other programs. I don't know whether Revit's the program of choice in Sweden or not, but uh, I'll, and, and hopefully I can inspire you in a little way to become part of drawing. Um, the, the, there's a brilliant architect actually who works in Malmo, who lives in Copenhagen. And he's, he's a Portuguese guy and I know him fairly well. His name's Joao and uh, he's part of Copenhagen Urban Sketches. So if you want to go down for a weekend to Copenhagen, go to the weekend when they're meeting up and, and go and meet him and Christine and other people there. And the Malmo group, um, I don't know her real name, but. I think it's Wintercat123 is from Elmo um, and the Melmo people meet as well. So um, they're the ones probably easiest to get to from where you are. Uh, but Nina Hansen is a Swedish um, urban sketching master um, and she has a nice website. Nina Johansson, I can give total her. She's a very nice woman. Um, so, you know, there's lots of good resources um, in, in your country and um, in Scandinavia generally. The Oslo people are actually 
very active. Um, Elizabeth Berger, I know, and they're doing an urban sketching weekend with Nino Hansen actually in um, a few months time. So uh, if you want to head over to Oslo for a weekend, um, that's all good. I guess you're allowed to travel in Europe much more than where to travel here. So if I just keep doing this, I'll just keep making it, um, I'll just overwork it now. So, but you get the idea, right? You can tell exactly where that is. Um, there's not much detail at the back because you don't really, you don't really know that that's, that that's not so critical. We can just put a couple of, you know, sort of lines and shapes. There's some buildings in the background, which I don't really know that what they, what they are. Um, and then the street sort of is, is sloping down. So there you have it. So hopefully I've inspired you a little bit. Bill, can we have um, a round of applause for Peter for the presentation? Yeah, that was amazing, Peter. Thank you very much. Really appreciate your... I'll, I'll, I'll make an official stop of the recording in this moment. And, uh, and, uh, and then I'm going to share the...